Annie Tidman was one of my best friends. Um, she joined the Sea Org in 1968. She was 12 years old. I'm pretty sure it might have been 13. Um, but yes, she joined the Sea Org in 68 and she went aboard the flagship Apollo at the time and she went there to be a Commodore's messenger and service L. Ron Hubbard aboard the ship. And she maintained that position of servicing LRH, L. Ron Hubbard, um, in his orders, communications, taking notes, dictation, making sure that his personal activities were done, such as, you know, make sure his spaces were clean, make sure that his, you know, whatever it took so that he had a distraction-free life was being done. That was her duty. She was one of several that started there, but she's the one who went throughout time, and she went with him off the Apollo. She was with him in Daytona. She was with him as they traveled to La Quinta, the headquarters, I mean, the then quarters that were in somewhere Southern California, that then became later going to Creston. Annie was, um, we were very close. And after she had left Creston and after LOH, um, January 86 happened, come blah, 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 we're now further up the time, um, we were in um, the film unit together. We were in film and equipment unit together. And she um, told me several stories. Um, the most hair-raising story that she ever told me was um, she was with LOH when he died. Um, she knew a couple days before that it was happening. She, didn't, she never said how much. I didn't know if it was a day, a week, or whatever. But she definitely knew. Um, the day before, he was um, dictating a lot of different orders. Um, she knew that it was imminent. Had he told her? Did yes. Did he tell her he was yeah. going to die? Yeah. Well, yeah. We, they were closing shop. So she um, took all the different orders, all the different dictations, everything that he said. Um, diff a lot of different things on court cases and legal stuff. She mentioned different random stuff. She never said specific, so I don't know. Um, there was something on his will. There was... Um, he gave directions and the last notes that were needed on something that he had attention on, on the, um, some of the OT levels that needed to be recorded. So she took that down. And anyway, so all that stuff was like what she was doing. And then the next day, um, the morning of, he was dead. So now you have a dead person in a trailer at the Creston Ranch. The person is Ellen Hubbard, but if you take it from the outside world view, there's a dead man. So she called 911. She and an ambulance came and the police came because you don't know how he died. So it was considered a homicide in standard law. And um, so not only is she going through her own emotional trauma of this person that she's been serving, extremely loyal beyond anyone's imagination for all those years, who's now dead. It's like you lose your parent. Even though you knew your mother was going to die, when she's then dead, it somehow is a different picture. I don't care what anybody says. Anywhere in the world, there is an emotion that goes along with that. So then he's dead. You got the police. You got the fire marshal. You got all that going on. Not fire marshal. I mean the ambulance people. And you got all that going on. And then... Um, the dogs. She was... Um, there was so much trauma happening that morning in her mind and trying to keep track of everything. They had big dogs that were there. They were beautiful big dogs. And um, I don't even know. They're a Chinese breed of some sort, and they have very fragile ears, and they always had to be taped up and so forth. And um, somehow these dogs got in a play fight that morning, and one of the dogs ripped the other dog's ear. And they're fairly high. They're like... 25 inches at the, you know, at the back. And um, they were fighting, play fighting, in the kitchen while Annie was running around on all the other turmoil. Um, I do not believe that Pat was there at the time. She never mentioned him. She, she, I totally got the idea that she was alone dealing with all this. And the dog with the cut ear were playing, 
with the head and there was blood dripping on the cabinets in the kitchen. And there was just like blood splatter from this bleeding ear. And she said, it literally looks like a murder had happened. Like it was a Holocaust in that kitchen. And she was just like frazzled because she couldn't clean it up. And this is the kitchen of the Bluebird home where yes. Hubbard lived in. Yes. So the dead body of L. Ron Hubbard was lying there and there's massive blood everywhere from a dog fight. That's right. So there's a dead body and That's a lot exactly. of blood, blood trails all over. And Annie is dealing with law enforcement ambulance and there's blood and she just lost the person she worked for for the last 18 years yeah perfect storm all in one go um she explained it as being the most traumatic thing she had ever gone through in her life beyond anything and i could totally relate to that and um it was interesting like uh, not interesting it was just so i mean she was telling me this from the heart i have no idea you know who could she tell that to i don't know she anyway she was telling me the story and i was just flabbergasted with this whole thing how did miscavige then handle the next six months how did he handle annie and the staff who had served her what what was the next evolution that you know about what I know about is that um, I think it's about six months later she arrived at the Gold Base and she went to the RPF. She went to the RPF, uh, the Rehabilitation Project Force. I never knew why. I had no clue. Mm -hmm. To this day, I don't know why. Um, Annie and I had a very strong relationship in that I never asked any questions. Mm -hmm. Any data that I ever got was that she offered to talk about it, but I never pried, so yeah. don't know. Mm -hmm. um, in my own mind, I thought it was over the issuance of the uh, loyal officer issue one and two that was apparently a false issue. That well, it, because it got mimeoed and got sent out and then two days later got pulled back. Yes. So, but I have, we, we were never told. There was no okay. issue on her. Um, so, so we were together for several years in f and &E, and then after I came out of the Sea Org in 2012, I learned that she was dead, that she died of cancer. I'm still aghast. Annie dead. so deserved a proper everything. The woman served the leader if, of this religion beyond anyone from her heart all those years, from she, she was a 12-year-old kid she was loyal and loyal and loyal and loyal. And there wasn't even an issue on her? No. To no. all of Scientology. Like, it's, it's true that maybe not all of Scientology knew of her, but a lot of people knew of her. And I, I, to this day, I'm still in a state of shock over this. And I guess I can just be sitting here and peeping about it. But I don't think that it's right that people are just... She sort of went under the carpet in a weird way. Like... What the hell? Like, if I look at a lot of things that were done in gold from 90-ish till when she died, what about all the restoration of the films? That is her heartbeat that ran that thing. If it wasn't, I mean, there's so many things that this girl put her heart into that got done. And it wasn't at the expense of people's sleep. It wasn't at the expense of them being, there were, anyway. She was a loved person, and I, I love her so much, and I don't understand why she was just shoved under the carpet like that. Not even the respect to tell her mother. They knew she was going to die, and they didn't want her dying on in-base, because that's ooh, bad PR. So they put her in an apartment building opposite Celebrity Center on Bronson. Yeah. The Sea Org owned an apartment building. The Bronson, And yeah. she was there, a person gave her an occasional touch assist, whatever. But she died alone in that apartment, diagonally opposite Celebrity Center. While you see the glamour and gloss magazines of Celebrity Center chandeliers, the Sea Org member she deserves died so alone much more. and in the dark. She deserves so much more. I wish that it had been a different way. Um, the, her continual compassion and service L. Ron Hubbard at any cost 
at her own life, at her own personal, any interest whatsoever? Like, who does that? You can't think of a lot of people. She didn't do it for money. She didn't have any money when she left. She didn't, she lived in a little teeny room. It was nice, had a bathroom, shared with another girl, but that was it. A lot of her belongings, she told me when she came from Creston and was, came to the, um, the gold base, were missing. I was with her up at the Bonneview, L. Ron Harper's house up there in the garage where all her stuff was, the day that she was going through it. And she was upset and livid because all her jewelry was gone and she didn't know who took it and expensive different suits that she had. She had a very classy taste and she had beautiful, um, beautiful clothes because she had a beautiful taste and that was gone and it was, that was rough being with her going through that BB garage to, for her to see her stuff ripped apart gone through by somebody, I don't know who, like, but who would go through her stuff? She came from being with LRH. What's she gonna infiltrate? Like, is she suddenly become an FBI agent? Like, it makes no sense. Hmm. Anyway, so, whatever, that's my own emotions on the subject, yeah. but the real point is, she was pushed under the carpet. Yeah. And I don't think she deserves that. There should be an issue, an in memorandum issue, just like anybody else, because, it's courtesy. They really wanted to hide Annie's death. I know, but... They really wanted to hide it. Why? Yeah. I don't know. But the courtesy should really have been an issue, and I feel strongly about it, and I will... If I think back in my life, in my 30 years in the Sea Org, she is one of my closest friends out of... I can count on two hands. And I just... It's not right. Her heart was too good, too big. She cared for people, so that's what I have to, that's just, thank you, that's Annie.